we are now going to talk about a finance lease. Now, a finance lease typically meets the definition of an installment credit agreement for VAT purposes. Now, think about a finance lease as you know it in terms of a financial accounting. It usually has to do that is over a significant period of time, the majority of the asset's life, for example, and there's um, some elements of control involved. Now, we'll see with the installment credit agreement, you just have to make sure that it complies with those requirements in the VAT Act. So there might be situations where um, something is recognized as a finance lease for accounting purposes and not necessarily for tax, um, for VAT purposes at least, as an installment credit agreement. So an installment credit agreement, guys, special value and timing rule. The value rule says it's calculated on the cash value of the supply and the timing rule tells you it's calculated on the early of delivery of payment. Now let's just quickly talk about this whole concept here and it's going to also go into our income tax implications. How it will usually work is let's say there is an asset that has a, a cash uh, value x vat of 100,000 rands and this is now in a lease. Right, so let's say it is for a period of 36 months Right, so let me just um, tell you what I mean by that. Let's say the rent, the rental says you pay for 36 months 4,000 rands per month. This is how much you're going to pay in total for the lease. So, total payment, right, and you'll see in a second. Sorry, it might seem a little bit confusing for you, but let me just set this up and you'll see what I'm working towards. So that means you're going to pay a total, if you re lease this asset for 36 months, 4,000 rands a month, you're going to pay a total of 144,000 rands. Now they tell you, if you went to the stores and you had to buy this, the cash value excluding that is 100,000 rands. This VAT rule here tells us that the VAT is calculated from the cash value of the supply. So the VAT is the cash value of the supply. In this case, I'm using the X VAT amount there, so times 15%. Right, so, uh, so 15,000. So this total here, including VAT, is 115,000. What's the difference between 115,000 and 144,000? That's 29,000 rands. And what is that, guys? Those are finance charges. Now, when you're looking at this from a perspective of a financial accounting, you recognize the liability at its present value, which is usually the cash value, right? The cash value with the VAT. And what you then do is you recognize interest over the period using the yield to maturity, and you raise it, and then you pay it and knock it off. Now, for income tax purposes, we are not going to separate finance charges and the cash value out. What we do is you take the full 4,000 rands a month, and that is the amount that you can claim for Section 11A, but you must exclude VAT. And how would you do it in this example I'm using here? The VAT is 15,000 rands. 15,000 rands is 36 months. So you just evenly spread it out. That is 416.67. Right, so I'm just going to call it 417 per month. So the amount that you can claim under Section 11A here is the 4,000 rands a month minus 417, and you multiply that by the number of months in your tax year. And that is basically how our finance lease works. So for income tax, I'm just going to go through it for you guys. The lessor remains the owner of the property, so the lessor can claim capital allowances. The lessee cannot claim allowances because it's not the owner of the property. Those lease or rental income amounts will be gross income for the lessor. So this that we calculated at 4,000 minus 4,7, that will be gross income for the lessor. And for the lessee, it's a general deduction formula amount. Any lease premium and leasehold improvements must be included in the gross income of the lessor, and you get deductions for those, as we know. And then I just want to make this note here on these finance charges specifically. 
the reason why we're not splitting it out, and why we're just treating this the same basic as an operating lease for income tax purposes, is because Section 24J's definition of an instrument, because I tell you for Section 24J, you can, must apply Section 24J to instruments and income instruments, and an income instrument is an instrument with some requirements. So instrument's the most important one there. An instrument, they tell you, excludes lease agreements. So that is why we don't split out finance charges. There's been some examples and things in the past, and even myself, I used to also split it out like that because of some treatment, but guys, that is not how it works anymore. You just take the full rental amount. So let me quickly look at an example here. Again, a comprehensive example. A limited and X limited, both VAT vendors with 31 December yens, they're not connected. A limited acquired machine F for 1.2 million rands plus VAT of 180,000 rands on the 1st of February and then entered into a lease agreement with X limited for a monthly rental at, of 30,000 rands. The lease is for a period of 48 months. It was delivered on the 1st of February and the first installment was paid on the 28th of February. The 30,000 rands per month includes finance charges and VAT. X Limited will use the machine in the uh, process of manufacture, and in terms of the agreement, X Limited, the lessee, accepts full risk of ownership and will pay all the repairs and maintenance. So the first requirement is, is it an installment credit agreement? Right, so, we're going through the definition again. Is it an installment credit agreement? There must be an agreement with corporal movable goods, which is the case here. It's supplied under a lease, and the rent consists of a determinable stated money amount, which is 30,000 rands for 48 months, and this must include finance charges, which we know. They tell us that. The aggregate of the amounts payable exceeds the cash value. Now, in this case, the cash value, including VAT, is 1380. The total that they'll pay is 1440 uh, million. So, as you can see, the difference between those two amounts is due to finance charges. Right. It must be for at least 12 months. This is for 48 months. And the lessee must either accept the full risk of destruction, which it does, or it must, uh, the lessor must have the full risk of destruction and insurance costs, and the lessee has the risk of only maintenance and repairs. But in this case, the requirements are met. It's an installment credit agreement. Okay, so for the lessor, what are the VAT implications and what are the taxable income implications? What are the VAT implications, guys? You calculate VAT on the cash value, and you account for an early of delivery of payment. The cash value in this case is 1.2 million rand, so that 180,000 rand stay, that's the VAT we will use. It's delivered on the 1st of February, first is payment 28th of February, so we claim it on the 1st of February. So what's going to happen now? You're going to claim or pay that output tax to SARS up front. For income tax purposes, what are we going to do then? Remember, the lessor can claim capital allowances and will have gross income for the rental. Okay, so there's the capital allowance, cash value, excluding VAT gas, and the lease income, 30,000 rands a month minus 3,750. That 3,750 is the VAT of 180,000 divided by 48 months, and we just spread it equally and you exclude it like that. Simple gas. Then D and E. For the lessee, what are the VAT implications and what's the taxable income implications? The VAT implications are exactly the same. You claim the input tax and the cash value on the earlier of the review of payment. Right, what are the income tax implications? The income tax implications is you can only claim the lease payments. There's no lease premium or leasehold improvement in this case. And again, it's 30,000 minus the VAT, which has been equally spread. There you go, guys. As simple as that. And these amounts over here, all of them that you would add up over the period of time, that is what you would calculate any lease recoupments in future with. But again, lease recoupments you'll study separately under recoupments.